Hey guys. You said the one again. <laughs> <sighs> All right. It is Friday. We are happy to be here as always. So Denny and I are continuing the saga of the cute kid bag. Cute kid bag. <laughs> the cute kid, kid bag. Anyway, because we're using some goats, which is just fun to call it kid skin. Because yeah. we're leather weirdos, and that's just a thing. It's actually what it's called, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, they're kids. A, 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 yeah. baby goat. a baby goat. A baby goat is called a kid. In any case, okay, so if you weren't here on Wednesday or you need a little bit of a refresher, we started. Sorry, you, I forgot, i got to be quiet. <laughs> um, we didn't bring the finished one in here, uh, but we are working on assembling this hair on kind of pioneer style yeah. crossbody bag. I don't know. It's just yeah. the open. Yeah. It's a simple bag. Yeah. Just, just a simple bag with just, some hair on it. We complicated it. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Putting hair on so it. let's see here. Denny, when we left off, you were starting to lace this. Yeah. Which you finished, and then you also laced the top side of the inside front panel. Correct. So, yeah, so this goes like this, and this goes on top of it. Yeah. This is the back, and then we've got our gusset over here. Yeah. That's so, what we're going to do today. Exactly, exactly. So, we've got both of our inlays buck stitched in, and we've got both of these edges double looped lace right here and right here, and then Denny installed the front half of, of the, the closure, of yeah. the closure. Um, I guess some of you are curious. We do have the pattern available for download, probably on this video as well, but then also on the one on Wednesday. And everybody just wanted to double check their dimensions. So I'm going to do that right quick so that everybody knows whether or not they have got it true to size. So the widest section on the front, and I believe these are the same, right? They should be. They should be. Yeah. Okay, so your front and back panels, which are the same, is 12 inches wide at the fattest portion, and then from top to bottom, you've got about eight and a half. Eight and a half from top to bottom on those, and then your top, your flap is 11 inches wide, just about. I don't know, there's lacing on here, so it might be a little bit narrower than 11, but it should be around there. And then... Seven and three quarters from top to bottom. Yeah. Yes, Tony. I'm at my desk and I hear like this mouse sound, like a little mouse is running around the room, but it's Abigail over there, like slamming the keys of her keyboard. We got Abigail in the house today. <laughs> she is here. She came on a Friday, so she could see Denny. That's the last thing I'm going to say, except it's not on the pattern. Itself, we only did half of this so you could print it out, but we left the holes so you just flip it over and double it around 26 inches. Total is the total yeah. on that. And I think we did say that on the pattern, right? I did type that in. I did my computer work over. My computer was not staying behind the cameras and the computers. Oh. <laughs> come on and say hi, Abigail. Yeah, come over and say howdy. Greet, greet all your hi, fans. Abigail. Come sit on the horse. Yeah, you can come have a seat right here. Look, guys. Oh, side Because <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> All right, keep going. You're going to say, you just say that. Hang out with them. Just yeah. stay here. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, you're locked in now. Uh, she got a sweet uh, hood. <laughs> I got my new hoodie. You're looking very sporty today. Thank yes. you. I did play sports about 10 years ago. Yeah, you played a sport? Sports ball. Yeah. For a minute. All right. Carry on. All righty. So you riveted those on? Yes, I riveted okay. those. So those we the, riveted on our handle those, tabs. Yeah. There, he buck stitched the entire strap. So that happened off camera. Then he just did a lot of buck stitching yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's fairly time consuming. So you guys didn't want to watch. Yeah, you guys don't want to watch that. It took yeah. me an, a whole hour just to buck stitch around this panel. Did you yeah. use those so. those uh, nippers? Nippers. Knippers? What are we going to use knippers for? The little nippers that Denny had, or that uh, Kevin had brought in on one of the videos. Like oh. that little beige handles that you can No, just... we just use oh. the regular. Shout out to the three millimeter <laughs> nippers. <laughs> oh my. Alrighty. Oh. They exist. It's going to be a great day. And Denny wanted to let me know that we apparently found the correct color of kangaroo lace because we have to use quarter inch for our Pop stitch. Pop stitch. Yeah. That we're going to do. So anyways, we've got ochre kangaroo lace in the house. Pop stitch? Yeah. It's pop stitch. Okay. And the difference between a pop stitch and a buck stitch, the buck stitch you'd actually do in a spiral. Okay. Pop stitch, you just go in and out. 
Oh. In and out. So you on the back side, it'll be the yeah. back side back of the lathe. Back side will be the unfinished side unfinished of the lathe. Side of the lathe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because when we do the buck stitching, you've got your front, which has the finished side, and then when you flip it over, this is still also finished on that with, side. With Woohoo! Goat hair. With the goat hair. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, here we go. I think that's all we have left to do, isn't yep. it? Now we're ready. Yep. We're going to do a lot of pop stitching Let's today. Let's do this. Okay. I should probably... You want to skadoodle? Yeah, I feel a little awkward. <laughs> and we have no idea why that is. Good luck. Okay. Oh. <laughs> that made it more awkward. <laughs> Anyways, oh. it's always a pleasure when Abigail stops in. Here's yours. Thanks. And here's mine. She's a delight. No. No, that's not right. This is yeah. this is maybe, mine. Maybe you ought to take that. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna pop stitch the flap and the back panel together. Denny already got me my piece of lace. And even so on this one, overhead. So here we go. So Denny cut a little chamfer, a little wedge onto the side of it. And, and then put it so in. it's there's not a blunt in there. It'll yeah. be easier to get. And it then once over. again, we put the side with the prongs on the finished side of the lace, so it grips into it really nicely. And then he just tapped it down with the back end of his hammer, so that it seated it. And hopefully, I won't have any problems with this pulling out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing you're doing, only different. Should I start at this hole? Yes, I would. And the way I would start this, I would come. Come from the bottom, uh -huh. go around, so you, so so you sure actually that... tie this corner Perfect. down. Perfect. Oh, you know what I was going to do? I was going to gum track this really fast. Okay. Because it'll be hard to finish later. You do that. Okay. Or actually not gum track because we don't have any, but I do have tilt on, which is probably better. And then Denny's going to try to not fill his coffee today. <laughs> Just try, though. We make yeah. no guarantees. <laughs> Everybody having a wonderful Friday? It's fantastic, when, Pussy. When we say <laughs> when we say stuff like that, I expect people to answer us right away. They just, <laughs> right away. Don't wait for latency. Vocally. Oh. I, I, I expect, expect to you, hear it. I expect you guys to call in and tell us how your Friday is going immediately. <laughs> We've got we've got a phone. We don't have a longer cord yet, but it's on its way someday. Oh, you've got a phone? We do have a phone in All here and right. it works now. You gave away our secret. Abigail, you gotta get to the sun. I don't know, Pete. Shut up. I'm your number one fan. Okay, I moved up first right off the bat. <laughs> Well, you know what? Better, um, better to get it out of the way. Yeah, I'm getting this over with. Denny, do you have any awesome weekend plans? Uh, no, but I think the very end of this month, we're going to go down to Hot Springs, Arkansas. Ooh. And hunt crystals probably. Ah, well, that'll be fun. Yeah. You want to take you want to take Kevin with you? <laughs> I, I could. <laughs> Maybe he could take us with him. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, we probably won't find what he finds when he goes. No, that sounds like a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm started. <laughs> oh, you put a liner on there too. Yeah, just to stiffen okay. it up because this is pretty limber. Okay, stuff. so you riveted your little tabs on and then you glued a liner onto it. Yeah. Okay. Did you yeah. split that down any from the weight no. that it was? Okay. No. So still just the same leather that we use to yes. line everything else. Yes. Is that on the pattern? Uh, Probably not. Okay. So addition here, guys, we just have a piece of leather that is it falls right between the holes two and one two three uh three eighths two and three eighths wide yeah 
You could make it the same width exactly and just punch the holes through the liner too. I didn't on this because the liner was an afterthought. <laughs> well, hello, Kevin. Hi, hello. We're making a bag on live video right now. So much. Yeah. Is With our light not on. There? I came at the wrong time. No, now you're involved. Kevin doesn't care. Oh. <laughs> you know what? Yes, sir. We might have to find something to do for a while. I don't think this is going to take us an hour. <laughs> The pop stitch is faster than yes. the double loop at buck stitching, isn't it? Yes. Well, thanks, well, Kevin. Thanks for that vote of confidence, Kevin. Oh, yeah, here's in some of that goat stuff. Yeah. You're not giving Look at that. That's really true. Well, I hate to... Do you, do you really, though? You're in on it. You're in. I think it's too late to hate to interrupt. Where's your yellow tape hat? I lost it. Oh, bummer. Somebody stole it and tried to sell it. Well, that was a lie, really. It's a nice piece of goat. That is a nice piece of goat. My goodness. You guys are, are actually semi-creative, Denny. <laughs> That's that's nice. Okay, what did this shape remind you? <laughs> it reminds me of what I sit on. <laughs> we discovered that yeah. Wednesday yeah. after yeah. the fact. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> that's pretty good though. I gotta run. I got stuff to do. Alright. Peek and see places to go. Food to eat. Can we drink sweet or unsweet beef? Unsweet. Oh, actually, no. Yeah, he's from the north. Okay. And of tea, tea is a is a demographic situation. <laughs> um, and it's interesting. So when we were in Tucson, um, we took one of the one of the girls from retail with us, Melanie, and she is from southern Missouri, maybe northern Arkansas kind of situation. In any case, she wants unsweet tea. Or I'm sorry, she she wants sweet tea. Uh, that does not exist in Tucson, Arizona. Nobody makes sweet tea anywhere. Anywhere. I mean, we went to two restaurants a day. We ate breakfast and we ate dinner. We did not get lunch because Kevin doesn't do that. In any case, every, every day she would attempt to order sweet tea. And they would say, okay, we've got unsweet with some, like, sugar. Will that work for you? That did not work for her. She she would not make her own sweet tea. It had to be pre-made. I don't know the difference. I'm, you know, I don't, I don't know. Either. But it's, it's very specific. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So she never got, she never got her sweet tea ever in Arizona. Um, but we also noticed, like, when you go south, suddenly the, like, like the southeast I don't know. It's weird how only the southeast is considered the south, and then you go to the west, but that's not really the south anymore. I, I don't know. Demographics and verbiage is weird. In any case, if you start going towards Georgia, unsweet tea starts to disappear, and you only get sweet. Like, that way, it starts to go away. And then as you go north as well, the sweet tea disappears, and the unsweet tea is the only thing you've got. Here in Missouri, we're very unique in that we serve both. Both. Either or. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes we're feeling sweet and sometimes we're Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm from here and most of my relatives are from further south than this, Tennessee. Okay. And they most of them drink sweet tea, but I drink unsweet tea. I don't know, there's just something about the sweet part that gets me. It's too much. Christopher's dad, and he's from California, so I don't even know how that works. But Chris's dad drinks sugar with some tea in it. <laughs> like, you pour that out. Like, I'll pour, if I ever go to their house and that's what they have to drink, I will pour, like, a quarter of a glass of tea, and then I'll fill the rest up with water because it is, it's just like you're drinking straight sugar. And I'm like, there's a wonder you don't have the diabetes because <laughs> that's not good. All right. 
Let's see here. Denny, Samantha's got a question for you. And then we also have a hype train going on on Twitch. What's a hype what, train? If you know, you know. <laughs> okay. All right, I have a question. She used tan coat on dyed bitch tan and some homemade antique with acrylic paint. The tan coat is peeling after I hand sewed and handled it. Is there something better to seal it with? Uh, I don't know. Okay, what gets me is the handmade antique. I don't know what you put in that. And that could be possibly what's making the tan coat peel. But to make sure everything is dry before you go to your next step, for one thing. And, and you probably did. You will tell me you did. So that might not be the problem. You might have a little bit of oil underneath your tan coat that's making it peel. And you might have put on too thick a coat of tan coat. It's better to put on two or three really thin coats than it is one thick coat. So, mm. uh, And as far as sealer, uh, I'll shoot, I like just a, a plain clear sealer like uh, Master's Quick Shine. That's what I use on just about everything. Yeah. And I've never had it peel on me. Never, ever, ever. Yeah. Did you talk about how thick she put it on? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, put on, try try just putting on a, a, a couple of real thin coats as opposed to one thick coat and see if that will help. Hey, Denny, can you slide that way? There we go. I can. Maybe I didn't want you to see what I was doing. Sorry um, for talking. Denny, I actually don't know what I'm doing. Okay, one second. <laughs> I will help you. The back of your head looks really good. Yeah, thank you. I, I had to do this. <laughs> I forgot to tuck my loop under. All right. Okay, but I, I mean, I kind of circled around, but now I don't really know what to do. Okay. Maybe I did it wrong. No, I think you did fine. Do you, though? Because if I go this way, then it's going to be wrong. Yeah, we're going to have to twist it. Let's see. Have you got my head? No, I switched cameras. <laughs> no, you can see anything. Put your hands on it. Let's see here. Should Let's I just pull this one back out? Okay. Well, why don't you just pull it out from the end? We'll just start over again. Okay. Okay. That's a fine idea. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. That's what I did. Okay. Now this when we go, we're gonna have to. Okay. We're gonna have to twist it when we go back in now. Oh, okay. I confused myself for a moment there. It happens. <laughs> to me, it does a lot. There we go. Okay, so now you just back. twisted as you came. Yeah, I twisted it. You can see gotcha. on the backside that one is right twisted. here. Okay. Now it's now it's laying the correct way. Yes. You know, the more I think about it, it might take us a full hour to do <laughs> <laughs> if we keep starting and stopping. Mm -hmm. uh, Liz, mm -hmm. we had a comment asking about the financing, financing machine for us. Who do they need to talk to about it? Can they just submit it or do they need to call in? Mm, nope, you can submit it. So the financing, we go through a third party called CIT. Um, so basically, you just fill out the application on the website. Um, either Rob or one of the other reps with CIT will get with you, and then they'll get with us to get uh, an estimate. If you want to talk about which machine is going to be best for your needs, feel free to give us a call, and any one of my customer service staff can can help walk you through the machine situation. Um, but then the financing, you just you have to fill out that application. Um, and then it should only take, but they're, they're usually pretty darn quick about it. They'll, they'll get back with you within, I think like 24 to 48 hours. 
So it's really pretty straightforward. Just know that machines though right now, you're usually gonna have about a two month wait time if if not a little bit longer, um, depending on the machine that you go with. So just be aware of that. <laughs> How do we go about buying some of this hair on goat? Are those on the website that we talk? Or are they not? I, didn't see them uh, I don't think they're on the website. Okay. You can give us a call on those. We have three different sizes. We've got a small, medium, and large. It was like, what, 12, 20, 25? Right. That's what. For the, the skins, you'll probably, to do this, if you wanted to do this, I would get a large one at least a medium because some of them we did we brought some in on wednesday um some of them do have some bald spots they are craft grade they're not perfect uh but for you know 20 bucks it's really it's a pretty darn good deal actually this one i could have made three bags I think, out, of the out, of the, out of the skin that i had but i mean you, you know wouldn't i get cut the it spine. i cut it i kind of cut the heart of the hide out so i could get this stripe right in the center of our panel yeah you know, but if you get a uh, like a a non-symmetrical colored hide, it wouldn't matter. You could cut it out of any part. Right. I need to clean up my yard, I think. It's supposed to rain, though, I think, this <laughs> weekend. I believe so. I don't need any more moisture. My backyard is a mud pit, and my, my floors are not feeling it. <laughs> all the dogs I just have every night, I have to, like, take the swiffer and mop up all the tiny little footprints running everywhere around my house. Because I my, my backyard is on the north side of my house, and I've got a two-story house, which means it's very shaded back there. And uh, it's just with all the snow, all the moisture, and it's winter, it's a mud pit. Denny, how much of the quarter inch lace do you think that people would need? Could they get 25? Uh, let me see here. That spool is 25 yards, isn't it? We need about two, five, ten. About ten yards probably would do the quarter inch lace. So you could buy the 12 and a half. You don't have to yeah. buy a full spool. Right. Okay. I think Chris's dad is supposed to come over and help us get his ventilation unit up and running in his knife shop. Oh, yeah? It's been in disrepair for a little while. Liz, do we offer a discount for veterans? We do. So if you give us a holler um, or send an email to team at Springfield Leather um, for your first responders and your veterans, um, along with business owners with your tax ID information, we give um, those folks wholesale. Can you maybe you talk about this? What's the difference between buck stitch and pop stitch? All right, the buck stitch is, we did talk about it yesterday or Wednesday and today, but we'll talk about it one more time. Uh, buck stitch you do in a spiral. Uh, and the pop stitch you just go in and out. So the buck stitch is has a finished look on both sides. This pop stitch is uh, finished on the front and, and the rough side of the lace is on the back. All right, so I made it to the end of my pop stitch. Do I just circle back through? Yes, now I would circle back through. Okay. <clears throat> Let's tuck this going down. 
Yes. Wants to kind of pop over the top edge. Let's see here. How would this pattern work or the inlay work in the, using a hair on cow? Would you S need the same up? way. Same Do you need way. To adjust the thickness? Nope, they're about the same thickness. There wouldn't be any difference at all, I don't believe. Now let's just clip this off. All right. Call that good. You want to continue yep. on this, and I'll let me clip this off too. I always tap the laces; it it kind of seats things down and makes it so it's not quite so. Long. Another piece of lace for the other side there that you're doing. Denny, what do you call a crystal that is 5,280 feet in length? Uh, a mile. Right? <laughs> and what'd you say? A mile. <laughs> now put the other part with what's a crystal. Stone. A milestone. All right. All right, that was a good hint, Tony. I just didn't get it. <laughs> Hello. Thanks, Tim. I got a joke the other day. Did I tell you about that? <laughs> you actually got one? Yeah, I got one right. Oh, I think we talked about uh, in our live. When did I get? I feel like it was yesterday that I did that. You want to show off your spray? I think I got it a little bit, but they want maybe we show it off a little bit better. That's nice. Now it just wraps around four times. Probably more if you have a smaller ribs. Then you would be a very small person. Well, I mean, my daughter, her wrist is pretty small. She got like, a, six. like a child. <laughs> she got <some> six. <laughs> This is going to be a lot of fun to lace together the two sides. Yeah, when you when we get to the the inside. Yeah. You got a little mohawk and, going on there, Denny. I know. A little mohawk. That's yeah. what I said. It's going to look like a springbok hide would actually oh. probably be pretty sweet, guys, <laughs> with this bag because the springbok, if you cut it in the right section, it does have where that little section on its back comes up, um, and it would stand up right there, which would be pretty cool. It would be. Mm-hmm. Oh, Michael Seeger is the one that sent you it and asking yep. the birthday question. Yep. What birthday do we all spend in the hospital? Or most of us spend in the hospital? Number zero? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the only riddle I've ever successfully answered. <laughs> All right. I'm punching holes for this strap because we're going to lace it on one end and it just goes through and uh, kind of threads through that slide on the other. You want to punch a hole like right here? Cool. Yeah. Punch three holes in it. Uh, 
That's all of that until we're done. I guess it on. You aren't using the horse. I'm not using the horse. It's, it would be hard to use the horse on this. It would be. That's what I figured. <laughs> That's why I didn't bring it. Well, but, <laughs> but uh, she needed a seat to sit on. So. Exactly. It was for Abigail. We just yeah. didn't know it. Denny, I think you've got a question up there. What's the trick to getting lace that is good for stitching? I think I have a few that are all the same width but different thicknesses. Well. Good for stitching? Good. What kind of stitching? Yeah. If for lacing like we're doing here, you know, just make sure that you use the same piece of lace for the whole project. You know, because it really doesn't, a thick lace, you know, if we used a thick lace and did it on the whole project here, it would be fine. Yeah, you could use a boot lace if you wanted. Yeah. In fact, on the, the other one, that Didn't example, I, I cut lace out of the same material that uh, that I made the bag from. But this is just kangaroo lace, and it's relatively thin. And poor people who don't want to cut lace because that's a lot of lace to cut yeah you know the kangaroo if you're buying lace I always buy the kangaroo because it, it is so nice to work with it lays so nice it's so strong yeah you definitely Suede lace would be a bit of a pain to try to use. Suede wood. Plus, I don't think it comes this wide. Yeah. A lot of people buy the deer skin lace to, to lace projects like this with, but it is so stretchy. Mm -hmm. It's really strong lace, too, but it is really stretchy. It'll get long and thin. I was going to say, by the time you start over here, you're going to have one thickness or one width of lace, and by the time you get over here, it's going to be much thinner. Yeah, about half of that. Yeah, much narrower, I'll say. Yeah. Yeah, I made I made a couple of necklaces with deer lace, and man, it just stretched out to nothing. I hung like a pendant on it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really pretty stuff. Mm -hmm. and it feels really good because it's so nice and soft and supple, but just doesn't do good for lace like this. If you're making garments out of another piece of deer skin or something like that, it might be nice for something like that. Yeah. Getting there. Uh, never mind. All right. I'm gonna try and drink some coffee without spilling it here. I'll shoot. <laughs> Dean was saying, I think I'm thinking dividers and pockets. Yeah, that's. I mean, here's the base of it. It's customizable to your heart's yeah. content. You can make it. You can make it as uh, as complicated as you want. You know, but we were just showing you. This is just a simple bag. Putting the liner in it and the the inlay kind of complicates it quite a bit. <laughs> Yeah, what I was saying on Wednesday is is just when you buck stitch these these uh, inlay panels in, if you wanted to put just another piece of leather where you're going to buck stitch around this, suddenly you've got a pocket. You just make it shorter than your than your top stitch line here, so it falls under. So you're not buck stitching it closed. Then you just stitch it up, and it'll there's yep. a pocket. Or you can make the same height, just don't catch your pocket and you go by. Ugh, that would yeah, you could. Yeah, you'd okay, have to be lo lower would be better. Put a rolled edge on it. Buck stitch the rolled edge. Yeah, a little that'd bit look lower. Cool. <laughs> yes, you are good at that, Tony, and <laughs> everyone here appreciates that, except me. <laughs> Did we ever figure out what happened yesterday? So yesterday, guys, like right after we finished our live sale, the power popped and like half of the building went dark, so that was oh, a lot of fun. Power popping. Yeah. 
we're always we always go out back into the alley and we look for the squirrel that decided to get itself electrocuted on the transformer but we didn't see one yesterday so i'm not sure what it was i'm not either something shorted it out that's always fun here seems to be a, a semi-regular occurrence our power going out well i've been here eight years and it's gone out i think this is the fourth time since i've been around oh yeah yeah Yes. And, so and the other times, the different. other times there were barbecued squirrel in the parking lot. <laughs> there sure were. <laughs> All right, Denny, there's the top. Okay. Let's go back through this last one. Tuck it under. What do I do with my knife? There it is. And I always leave about a quarter of an inch tag when I do that. There it is. That looks pretty darn good. Pretty good. All right. Now we've got to do that again. Now, and again. That was the easy part right there. Oh, I'm sure glad I got the easy one. I'll let you do the hard side. Thanks. <laughs> Let's hear Joan ask, which of your laces do you sell, do you suggest for replacing baseball mitts? Our boot laces. Or the Latigo, the Latigo yeah, lace? Yeah, Alam they're Alum Tan oh. laces, yeah. And we've got a wall full of them, I believe. We do, I'm trying to find it here in the camera. I don't know, we used to have colored ones, I don't know if we We got two it. different colors, browns and a black on the website. We used to carry some neon ball glove, but I think the it, Auburn was the, the company that we got those from, and then they went out of business, and then they sold to somebody else, and it's been a little bit of a hoopla, I think, getting in boot laces since that happened. Well, oh, they're still in there, so maybe we do still have some. So page 145 in the catalog has the Allentown laces. And then on page 146, there is the ball glove repair tool. I guess if you know magic, then you can just use, use your wand. Can you hear that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I heard you on the corner. Repair. This <laughs> uh. is really awkward getting these things started. After you get them started, it's generally not quite as bad. Generally. I remember to tuck it under this time. Good job. Thanks, Tony. You're welcome. This How'd you guys do in your live sale yesterday? We did quite well. We sold all of we we sold almost everything. I saw you guys out in the parking lot unloading a whole bunch of leather. Yeah. Were you just watching Danny? I was just watching, yeah, I thought, yeah, even if I go out there, I'll have to help, so I just watch. <laughs> so, just, so the desk and looks out his window. Actually, I think I was buckstitching that while you were doing it. You probably were. It's 
a lot of flippity flopping going on, didn't he? Well, yeah. <laughs> flippity flop is what I do. <laughs> this is a completely non stone bag. Yeah, there's not one stitch on it. Not one stitch. Some buck yep. stitching and some pop stitching and some double loop lacing, but yeah. no regular stitching. That's what kind of gives it all of its character. Yeah. Well, you know, yesterday or Wednesday, someone, uh, Dana wanted to know if it could be machine stitched, and a lot of it could be if you wanted to. It would be very hard to machine sew what we're doing yeah. right now, the yeah. way that it's constructed. But if you did, if you put these panels kind of face to face like this, I mean, it's going to look different, Yeah. but you could sew it like that. Yeah. Like a saddlebag stitch, mm -hmm. whatever they call it. But, you know, that's the neat part about this is all the hand lacing. You know, to me, that's selling for And it looks cool. It does look cool. People that say they don't have enough patience to do this, they shouldn't be doing it, I guess. <laughs> this isn't the project for you, then. Yeah. yeah. But this, you know... I feel like leather work is literally all about how much time you want to put into something. Like, that's... You can make something as complicated as you want be because there are, you know, more and more complex methods of construction that you could go down right. um, for any given project. You know, I, I say I make knife sheaths. A lot of people make knife sheaths and a lot of people make different kinds and there's different yeah. tiers of, of construction and options and carry styles and... Well, and, and people say, you know, it takes a long time to do a good job. Why do you have to do that? And you don't have to. But if you want to do a good job, a lot of times it just takes some time. Yeah. Am I still We're in, just taking in the time. realms of, of the camera here? Mm, I think you're all right. You come and go. But <laughs> I feel like people understand what's happening. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> Let's see here. Angela asks, is there an appreciable difference to homemade lace versus purchased lace? Does the beveling make a big difference on something like lace? Uh, yeah. Uh, there again, you know, if you wanted to take the time to hand cut and hand bevel uh, uh, lace, you know, that's another selling point. It, you know, a beveled lace will definitely lay a little bit nicer than a than a straight cut lace. Oh, um, I mean, and Angela, that really depends on your application. So, like this, you just have the the one string of lace going in and out, and there's not a lot of um, I mean, there's just not a lot happening here. But when we had Spencer in here and he was braiding yeah. with the lace, the bevel made a huge difference right. because how it laid on the braid as he went around. Um, if you didn't bevel it, you were going to have all these kind of like these yeah. these hard corners. But if you bevel that on the inside, then everything smooths right. down and it'll create a better whip. So really, I feel like a lot of it depends on application. Yeah. And this too, if if you're using a real thick piece of leather to cut your lace out of, yeah, you know a bevel will definitely make this look better too. Yeah, it'll make those edges lay down. You won't see that big blunt raw edge on the outside. <laughs> yeah, you can just put it down. When I was in Wyoming working for that saddle maker up there, we did a lot of hand cut to and hand build kangaroo lace. Oh yeah, that's what you were saying. You yeah. said that you cut your own, you guys bought skin. Yeah. Yeah, we just buy a kangaroo skin and, 
and cut it up into lace. And you know, it's pretty time consuming, but to man, I mean, you end up with a pretty nice product. Yeah. So we we bought a lace cutter. Um, I'm not going to say that we're cutting lace right now. The thing is from like 1902, and it's, it's got a, a cute little GE motor on it. Um, and it's this wooden contraption, probably about half the size of our four by eight table here. And you cut it, it, it had a die that I think cuts like a, maybe a 12 or a nine inch circle or something like that with a hole in the middle. And then you put it on your little thing and you have to set up this and it's supposed to just run through and cut lace. And it's been, it's been tricky. I think we were able to finally cut more than like six or eight inches at a time, but it took like Jim, Clayton, and Spencer, I think, all around that thing, like, feeding it through appropriate, like, I don't know, like, they were all, and Clayton was hoping that maybe he could get it down to just two people running it to where it would cut some lace. I don't know. Rusty found a thing, which is what Rusty does, and it's cool, but it is rolled. Yeah, this, uh, the, the lace cutter that we used and I don't remember the manufacturer's name, but it was just a little bar of aluminum about an inch in diameter and about a foot long, and it had different slots cut in it, and you just used a, an injector razor blade. Is it like the Osborne lace cutter? Sort lace of, only, only it's quite a bit bigger, and it will not only cut lace, but it will bevel lace, and it will split lace. Split lace? Yes, you can you can make it different thicknesses. Ooh, wow. You know, Interesting. out of this same tool. And it worked really well. It was manual, you know, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, unless you're selling lace, which, which if we could get hours to work and good, we would probably sell some lace. Maybe. If, if we could get it to work right. But to, just to be using the lace that you use, you don't need anything really automated. Yeah. It would take a long time to uh, use enough lace to make it pay for itself. How am I doing? You're doing great. <laughs> You're almost halfway there. Yeah. And so the very last thing that we'll do on the back is install the front side of the clasp because we don't know where it needs to go until everything is kind of all stitched up yeah. and uh, how that front panel is going to turn and lay. So we still have the back side of the clasp to install. And Denny just use a turn lock. Excuse me. It is an 85-22102 oval turn lock clasp. Front. Do you have a number for those goats? I looked and I didn't see one. They might be doing something different on each one. Sweet. Illustrator. We've incurred an error. Well, Illustrator did. Ooh, you know what would be cool? No. So I know for uh, a while there on our on our live shopping, we did some of those printed calfskins, like those fun printed. Those would make really cool inlays. Yeah. Like all, and you could make this totally different feels depending on the printed calfskin that you had. Um, are we doing, was that the bundle that we're doing or is that, those the little lambskins? Those are the lambskin bundles. But in any case, if any of you, we haven't, we haven't sold any of those in a while. We probably still have some. Maybe next week we'll do spring colors and some printed calfskin bundles. What do you think, Tony? I, I feel like you had a whole conversation with yourself and I didn't listen to the end. <laughs> cool. Sorry, I was busy with computer work. 
Yeah. So if any of you out there had got some of those printed calf skins, the hair was super fine on them and some of them had really neat prints like you, there was like a chevron print, um, all just all sorts of really cool and the hair was just so fine and it was a really delicate so it's not going to add a lot of bulk to the project and I think those would make really neat inlays. And you could make it a little less Western, I guess. So for somebody that's looking, like they they like the style bag, but maybe it's a little bit too Western for their, their take, you could add one of those kind of fashion calf skins and make it a little more modern. You know what else? Give it a little modern me? feel. <laughs> what was that uh, suede, that painted suede that I used when I did those uh, filigree belts? Oh yeah, the, the um, the metallic suede yeah. that we have. Mm -hmm. That would make a neat inlay. That would too. make a really cool inlay also. <gasps> and then you could use some of like the metallic uh, chap leather. Mm hmm. Any friends on there? Yeah, you could put fringe in your theme. I would have a question. What would you do to set this up to make it a uh, conceal and carry bag? Um, I mean, that just depends on the leather that you use. Yeah. Use a piece of Bontex. Mm -hmm. Inside your uh, liner, between your liner and your finish side. Yeah, you'd probably you probably you probably put your your zipper pockets here on the back panel, and then you would create an inside pocket that would be bulky up here on the inside. Yeah. And then you could get to it from. So you'd actually probably want this panel to be a little bit stretchy, or uh, well, you'd want the finish side to be pretty firm because you wouldn't want the imprint of the gun. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. and then have the have your conceal and carry pouch in there. Yeah. That would take a little finagling. You'd have to do a little R&D on your own to figure that out. <laughs> but I've made them before and used Bontex. Okay. Just, just cement Bontex to, to the finished side. Mm -hmm. And then, the, of course, the, the, the liner wouldn't be cemented to that finished side because Got there. Mm -hmm. And you have to make it quite a yeah. bit larger. Yeah. Why do squirrels hang out near a sane asylums? Uh, it's got to be something to do with the nuts. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> so you catch all the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That razor blade again. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, looked like there was some extra stuff that was on the pattern. <laughs> but I have gone in and made an adjustment. Extra stuff. Another layer. So it should be fixed now if you go and re-download it. But pink or extra stuff should be off of there. We're getting there. Yep, we're to the final stretch. What is Tony just saying yes to? Would you consider an insult if somebody thought your hand sewing was done by a saddle maker using a machine? No, I would consider that uh, a compliment. Yeah. Want to see some concealed and carry purse patterns from SLC? I think we got I've one got one them. somewhere. Do you? I think. That's been a, it's been an idea that we've been knocking around. Purses are just. Denny's made one. We Difficult. just we yeah. lost our. I made several. I know, but that was right around the time that we had some changes in latitudes. Oh, Sorry, yeah. Chevy, I was talking oh, again. The latitude change. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or I forgot all about our latitude. I forgot about our latitude <laughs> changes. Cool King, my the the order one of the goats. The lady was very helpful. They shouldn't bless you. They should know the number on the phones, I suppose. Then. Sorry for talking. Oh, you're sounding like me. Will you apologize for me, Abigail? Tony is very sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tony is a second person. Rabbit for inlay? Question mark. 
Ooh, you would hate yourself. Yeah, I tried to inlay some rabbit one time. The fur is just so thick, and it looks weird after you cut it, and I don't, it's, I, I wouldn't do that. And if you're at all, if you at all have allergies. Yeah. The rabbit fur, when you cut it, it just, it starts to permeate the air. It does, really. It does. I mean, it, you cannot get rid of it. There's no way to cut it without to... Is that it floating around? It wouldn't be ideal. We'll say that. Yeah. Something with sh with with shorter, less less dense hair would be would be preferable. You want to maybe toodle this way just a little bit. <laughs> toodle toodle that way. Toodle this way. <laughs> okay, I'm toodling over here. For a minute, I'll probably move it again. Yeah, I know. It'll be fine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's no hope. <laughs> <laughs> what if you, to make this a conceal and carry purse, what if you just didn't put the back on it and you just had a holster that was below it and you just wore it as a crossbody and put the bag over your holster? <laughs> <laughs> if it works for you, Tony. <laughs> So like a faux, like it's just like a fake purse. So you just wear it on the side and then you just reach in your bag to get yeah. it. <laughs> that Tony's got some weird ideas. Oh, that's not even the weirdest thing <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm good with my Oh yeah, and well, I forgot about that. Oh, hey, oh no, I think that's on the sheet. Some sample packs of Orion dyes, like little sample packs. Uh, I don't really know how we would make it work. I mean, the bot, yeah, I don't know. Because what colors do we put with what? And, or maybe if you maybe if you bought, like, say you wanted to get the red of the Orion dye and you got it in all four things of it? I don't know. Brainstorming. Yeah, I mean, you can't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's... It's a really cool product, and it is it's it's worth the money. Like what the the results that you can get from it are are pretty spectacular. And honestly, like the containers are already not big. Like it's not like you're buying a quart of dye. You're buying like eight ounce, six ounces, four. I don't know. They're small. Um, and then you've got like the boot polish and the cream, and that's all. They're they're just not large containers. So I don't I don't know if a even smaller option would really be you know, advantageous because you have to, the thing with the Orion is that you mix up the different styles of products to get different finishing techniques. Um, and then you can mix colors to get, you know, the color that you're looking for or, or whatever that it, it is. kind of work together. Yeah. So it, it is, it will be an investment and that's just kind of, I think how you're going to have to look at it because really breaking it up in, into even smaller containers is, is not going to be, we're, that's, we're just not going to do that. <laughs> Do you remember what leather weight you were using for this? The the finished leather is a four to five ounce. I think we said it in the first one we gauged him. Yeah. And then that's when he knocked his coffee over. Oh yeah, that's right. So look for the that's where, <laughs> that's where we lost concentration. Yeah, that's hey. where it went awry on Wednesday. <laughs> Maybe when we go back and timestamp the video, we can timestamp the coffee spill. And then we can be close to what the leather weight is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could gauge that strap, Tony, because it's just two layers of the top, and then you could divide it in half. I could, but I'm over here doing computer work. Mm. What are you trying to say? You're busy? Oh, yeah. All right, what are you doing in there? Yeah, I'm just tucking the, the last It'd lace It'd be cool if I could see that. It would be cool. If <laughs> <laughs> Can you turn it I get it. it. Pull it all the way tight. I can try. Oh, now you're handling Oh, thanks, Denny. He's just tucking that tail into one of the loops, right? That's right. Yeah. 
Thank you for that. Now I'm going to trim that off. I'm going to have to trim this top off a little bit too because I came out odd for some reason. Did you miss a hole? Well, I don't think so. Oh, you got your two holes short. Did I do something weird? No. Did you miss the punch in the hole? Yeah. We should have started right there instead of down here. That's that's all right. We'll just turn that what, off. Can we see what happens? So maybe everybody else doesn't get guided in the wrong direction. What we did. Well, <clears throat> we started we started lacing this part of the gusset down here in this hole, and we should have started up here in this. this oh, you want to start on your flap? Yes. Uh. Yeah, we can see that's the top hole. Of... No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whoops. But that's all right. No one will ever know. I'll turn that off at some point. We won't do it right now. Okay. There we go. There's our bag. Look how cute that is. Looks okay, good. so just for you guys, when you start lacing in the gusset, you want to start on the hole that lines up with the with your, your pop stitch in the back. And I think I'm the one that started that. You were, and I, I took was. over here and I finished. So it was not my fault. I didn't do that. I did. <laughs> yeah, so you want to start lacing up here. Cut them all out and start over. Well, I could. If I was going to sell this to someone for well, lots we're and lots do it of as money. A giveaway, so we need it to be nice, Denny. If we're doing it as a giveaway, they can take it as is after I trim <laughs> that off. How's that sound? Wow. Oh, you could. Wow. Yeah. All right. It's going to be great. It'll but anyways, isn't that adorable? Look at yeah. that. Okay. Let's let's set this other part of this closer. I do love you guys. Look look how this little little spine stands up. It's got a cute little mohawk going on there. <laughs> yeah. Man, I really want to do this. Had a springbok would be pretty incredible. That's gonna stand up like three inches if you had a springbok skin in here with the little mohawk. And we do have some of those. We've got them on retail. And I don't think they're all that, maybe like 30, 30, 40 bucks or something. We've got some craft grade spring box that would be a pretty neat yeah. inlay. I'm thinking about right there. Everybody said they got time for you to remove lace if you would like. No, we don't. They do, but I don't. <laughs> I'm glad y'all are with me. You know, if we would have if we would have put that zipper on there, you could just unzip it oh, and zip yeah. on a new gusset. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Sorry, I was busy being quiet when I made that suggestion again. This thing's tricky. Oops. There we go. Do either of you know the airbrush siphon lid? Either one of the ones that we have, do they fit on the feeb the small thievings dye bottle? They do. They do? Yep, that's we use that all the time. The which one? This the one this on the bottom. One? Yeah. Nine zero dash zero zero three. Yep. It'll screw right on to the fee beans, the four ounce fee beans bottle. Nine zero dash zero zero three for airbrushing siphon lid for fee beans bottles. I don't think that it'll fit on the Angelus bottles. I think they have a smaller lid. So you have to pour your Angelus into the bottles that you can buy from us. You guys seeing exactly what I'm doing here? Let me do it like that exactly. Now. Poke holes, stick in hardware. Got it. Trying to make it where it's all the where it's square. Not real square there. Don't be such a square, Denny. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah. 
Now I'm going to put this little deal on there. What do you call that little deal? Call it a washer. A washer. All right. Let me use a screwdriver. He's been in the... We'll show you guys in a minute. Yeah. Oh, no, nope, we're good. There you go. Can you see I that? I can see your head. Well, I got it. I mean, it's, I think it's as good as it can. Okay. Um, Abigail, did you let down the number I just said? Oh, thank you. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put this. Alrighty, so now we've got to put the strap on. Sorry, once again for the airbrush siphon lid that works with the small Phoebing bottles 90 003. Uh, could you put the clasp on before you glue in the liner and the outer together? Yes, but we wanted to make sure we showed putting the hardware in. That's exactly right. Yep, and then also sometimes you can mock one up and then just make sure it's going to be right um, on your placement. That's I, I think that's the majority of the reason why Denny waited yeah. to make sure that the flap was coming over far enough. But, I mean, yes, ideally it would be housed between those two layers. Once you have one made, now you have your now you have your spacing, and you would yeah. be able to yeah. So maybe put that into your pattern. Make a prototype out of some throwaway leather or something, and or maybe get your maybe if right. I get over here doing my computer work, I can add take it. Denny's back bag apart, and then I can just measure it and add it in there to put on the pattern. How's it going, Denny? Trying to think. That's so hard on me. Go. All right, now I can figure it out. There it is. Huh? So we've got one slide and a keeper for the adjustment. There it is. The close one. Yeah. <laughs> it's always close when I do Man, stuff. what was it? Clayton and I were making something and we were trying to figure out how to how to put the strap on it. Oh, it was the roll top backpack. Yeah. Uh that was fun. That took a couple times. And eventually I got it and Clayton still got it wrong. I got mine right. Bragger. Yeah. This side just lace them together. Just use his handy piece of lace to the left. Just this little leftover up here. Thank you. Stand up. <laughs> Started from the wrong side. You're all seeing exactly what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect an answer. Go. Ugh, always scare me every time with that. All righty. It's backwards. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> Anyways, there's the bag. It's beautiful. Nothing is wrong at all with it. <laughs> What's backwards about it? <laughs> Nothing backwards. Nothing about is backwards about That's it. All right. All I would have to do is just switch the strap around. Mm -hmm. All righty. So then this part slides so you can adjust it. The strap is a little stout, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is very stout. It's not going to go anywhere. But it'll be more comfortable than like there we go nice crossbody little furry kid crossbody whoops a little kid crossbody that's good or i guess it could just be a regular purse but i never wear purses like this because i have tiny shoulders and they always just fall off and it drives me crazy so if i can't wear my bag like this i don't buy it <laughs> that way you can have your neck in the way so your bag doesn't fall off exactly <laughs> Look, I've got it that no one can steal it from you and yeah. that's yeah without dragging you down the sidewalk there's <laughs> And hopefully they're not going to try that. <laughs> so we got this. Danny, it looks like we've got one more question that's semi-non-related. So. A background bevel or bevel, should they have a sharp edge? I'm not sure what you're saying about a background beveler. That was what I was wondering. Uh as far as just a regular, uh, are you talking about for carving, for leather carving? Uh, uh, I'm going to assume so. Carving beveler. They, the edge shouldn't be sharp sharp like it would cut, it, but it should be fairly definite. A definite. Should definite be, termination? Should be rolled, yeah. Okay. I mean, it wants to be polished where it won't cut, but uh, it doesn't, it shouldn't be rolled. Yeah. Hold on, I'm waiting to see if we get uh, a question or an answer to your question. We had a question? Not an edge beveler. Oh. Yeah, not an edge beveler, yeah. A tooling beveler. A I would... back beveler? A back beveler should have a rolled edge, yes. It shouldn't Maybe. be sharp. They didn't say back beveler, I'm just trying to guess. Well, if it is a back beveler, they're talking about. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure that we know that there's a specific beveler for backgrounds. Yeah. That's. I think that's our little yeah, question that, there. Yeah. John. That's the, yeah. That's what I'm confused about. A background beveler. Do you have a specific tool number? Hi, Luna. What are you doing, Luna? Come here. Come on. Do it. She can't do it. It's too hard. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I think even I'm better right now at this point. Yeah, I think. Hey. Hi. She's having a tinkle issue. Yeah. Are, Are you? Are you? Hey, Luna. <laughs> Because you're so wound up. You got all your feelings are happening right now. <laughs> Her butt is wiggling so much, guys. <laughs> the bevel are you after cutting? Yes, it it should not be sharp enough to actually cut the leather, but it but it should be fairly definite. It shouldn't be rolled round. Um, Rorick said he had the question. Hi, Rorick. We got our leather. I have a question for you, Rourke. <laughs> How come my arms are still so cold? You're just not special enough, Tony. Latico says, do you bring Luna with you most days? Every day. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. Yeah, Liz is okay. She's talking to Luna. Oh, yeah. So we, yeah. <laughs> I talk to my dog. She likes, she'll, she'll drill for me, so... She's good at rolling her R's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just have to get her worked up enough. Like the B200, which is just a, a smooth bevel. Yeah. So you don't need it to be cutting into your leather. to be pushing your leather. Yeah, it shouldn't be sharp, sharp. Like knife sharp. Yes. Kitchen noisy? 
All right. Did you flip your flip your strap? That's what I'm in the process okay. of. Flip your strap. Yeah, we had his his uh connections. <laughs> I had poor uh, connections. can we measure but now we have measurements in here? Um Kristen, but will you can you what do we measure do? the part for the inline? Just a rough idea. Um the making zip parts. Could you measure the hair inlay for me? I have some buffalo hide scrap I want to use for the top. All right, so you got it? Okay, so here we are. This is the top. So on here, we've got eight, so and, a half. eight and a half. So you probably want nine inches at least, maybe a little bit yeah, wider. Nine or nine and a quarter. Yeah, to go from because you want it to come out on the other side. So nine and a half probably would be safe. Yeah. So nine and a half inches this way. And then if we go from a little bit above the buck stitching here, so probably six inches. Six and a quarter, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, because our little butt goes down over here. <laughs> yeah. You know, and alter so, you if your piece isn't yeah. quite big enough, alter your pattern a little bit. Yeah, make your inlay make a little bit that smaller. A little bit smaller. Yeah. Don't do such a Yeah. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Don't make your bun so big. <laughs> make your bun so smaller. 11 by 17. 11 by 17 is what the pattern is, is on because the big piece didn't fit. So this is the downloadable version. 11 by 17. Give you all your little pieces. Yeah, and then just, if you don't want to make that the inlay, just make it a little bit different. Yeah. All right. Okay, guys. We're going to jump over on Twitch for just a little bit longer. What are we doing next week? Do we know what we're doing next week? Yeah, next okay. week Clayton will be making the Voyager backpack. Probably another two-parter. Um, Wednesday and Friday, he will be doing the, the Voyager backpack pattern, which is a pattern we have been selling for years and years and years. Um, the instructions are a little outdated, so this should give you a little bit of uh, some fresh look at making that backpack. So join us next Wednesday at 11 Central Time. We'll be here. See you guys. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye, Abigail. Uh, bye.